So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is March 3rd, 2022. So actually we are on the March um, gateway. So because it's 3-3. So March 3rd. So it's and it's kind of a big, well, it's not really a beginning of a new theme, but it's I find that there is um an excitement going on with this March energy. I know um, excitement may be <laughs> a loaded word. Let's, let's put it that way. What I think of as excitement may be too much excitement for other people because, you know, on the, the world scene now, there's really t- um, quite a bit of um, things going on. And, um, but anyways, for me, for, for myself, it's, I can feel the switch between February and March energy. And maybe it's because I, I kind of um, found something and I'm kind of ex- excited to share. And that's why the, the topic for March um, for as many episodes as it takes is really about the, the the human experiment so i want to begin by actually referring back to what something that franco franco di nicola has shared in his series of um, events consciousness um, series and it's episode number 43 so during that episode he kind of talked about within the human DNA there's actually um, between like on average about 12 different DNA ancestors so let me just switch over to that slide there so this is so dna contributors meaning that within our own dna there are actually other species that have contributed to them and um so so these are the ones that he kind of told us he said that there are primaries and then there are secondaries so his way of um, categorizing them as primaries, meaning that these are the people that actually interacted with us much more than the ones, the other ones. So meaning that you know we actually the reptilians has actually lived amongst us and still living amongst us, and. Pleiadians, Arcturians, Lemurians, and Syrians. Those are the people that have lived amongst us. They have intermingled in our society. And that's why um, they, that's how they contributed their DNA is really through mingling with human beings. And when I say mingling, it means that we actually have relations. We have sexual relations with them. So that's how they they contributed to our DNA. And then there are secondaries, which are, um, I think there are seven of them. Okay, so yeah, there are seven um, secondaries. These people, the way that they contributed to our DNA is um, a little different. So for example, the Elohim, the Elohim actually are, they are progenitor species, meaning that they, they're they the original species that created a lot of the other species. They, so they are the ones that created um, planets, created realities and so, and when they created these, these realities, their energy is, and also 
um, is kind of imprinted on the on Earth itself, on the planet itself. So that's how they contributed to our DNA. It's because we are on Earth, and Earth has been created by beings that were created by the Elohims. That's why, kind of in a more in a more secondary way, we have access to them, even though they have not actually walked amongst us on Earth. But spiritually or energetically, the Elohims actually are always with us. And some of the other ones are the Andromedans, Vegans, Greys, Yael's, and Nordics. Um, so, and then there are additional ones, Adlerans and the Solarians. Um, and I just want to talk about all of these different species that have contributed to our DNA. If you look at the list, especially the primary ones, there is the reptilian. And, and you know, the first thing that came to my mind was like, Hmm. The reptilians are really not the good guys. They are, um, I think, this, or from all a lot of the, the 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 things that I have read is the you know reptilians. So reptilians is a species, but within the reptilians, you can think of the draconians as part of reptilians as well. So the Draco, the draconians, are definitely not, um, I would think of, or most people would think of as being the good guys. And, and also Anunnaki's, I think some of you have heard of that name, is also a, a branch of reptilians. And there are good Anunnaki's, or, and then there are the ones that, the not so good Anunnaki's. So reptilians, when you look at the reptilians, um, it's a mixed bag. And that's something that I want to bring out is that each of these species, there are, I'm quite sure that there are Syrians that are maybe not exactly bad, but at least um, their motives may not always be for the benefit of human beings. So what I'm trying to say is that not all reptilians are good, not all reptilians are bad, just like not all human beings are good and not all human beings are bad. The same can be said for grace and um, well, Elohims are the creator beings. So, so I, I will leave that um, out of the, the equation. But a lot of the other species that are here is, um, is not to put a label on them. However, when you look at this, all of these, if you actually just look at the, the, the 12, just look at the, the, the primary and the secondaries. And so just look at these 12, because the additional, not, a, I would say on average, most humans don't have them. There's a fraction, only a smaller fraction of human beings would have these additional contributors, um, DNA in their, in their own, blood but if you just look at these the 12 that are more of the the primaries and the secondaries it's a mixed bag it's you can say that it's a mixed bag um and i was actually 
Franco did mention that at some point that he would um, he would tell us more about you know the 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 characteristics of each of these. However, unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to do that before he he moved on to a different plane of existence. So that's why I've been trying to find ways to get to know these people better because they are in our blood and especially in my blood so I would for for myself I'm always interested in knowing about these alien races why because well I'm a trackie I've always been interested in um, Star Trek and Star Wars all of those so that's my own interest so i want to to know more about all of these different star races and the other ulterior motive is that these these um dna are in our own blood and according to what what um franco mentioned is that what it means by being in our blood, it, it, it actually means that we inherited a lot of their abilities, their, their um, eccentricities, what is, what is the best trait from them, and all, also what is the not so good traits from them as well. So we've inherited all of this, but it's not just that we inherited these from them is that we have the ability to upload our experiences to them as well. It is just that in the last, um, at least maybe in the last 5,000 or so years, um, maybe, um, that we, our own DNA has been so dumbed down that that, was, that process was cut off. But before that, like if we're looking at, at the, the prior to the last the couple of thousand years, our DNA actually has, um, it runs both ways. We're influenced by them, but we also has the ability to influence them. So one of the, I would say the big, biggest discovery that I come across is that one of the reasons why we are given these 12, well, 12 to 14 different DNA is that there is a particular purpose in it, in that the Elohims are, or the, the people that are that have created all of this um, that is running the simulation because our reality in a lot of ways is really a simulation that all of this is um, you can look at it as an experiment but an experiment in a more cosmic um, level is that there is that's why the topic for this month and for this particular episode is called the human exp experiment it's because i look at it as and that our reality is an experiment and i was wondering how come we have these 12 different star um, systems or or these star species in our blood what was what was the reasoning behind um mixing reptilians with pleiadians because if you if you look at um within the reptilians there there are people like the draconians that are actually they want to take over the whole world they want to control everything, whereas Pleiadians don't, or that they're, they're, 
their motive is really to inspire us to be spiritual. So it's a different feel to these, uh, each of these, everybody has an agenda, but the agenda for the Pleiadians is, seems to be from the, the point of view of uh, being a human being, it seems to be for our own good, whereas the, the draconians is really not. And what's the, the purpose of mixing all of these very opposing um, ideologies in one species, the human species? What the heck were they thinking? What were the, the, the gods thinking? What were the, our creators thinking? Why? So that was the question in my mind. And I actually came across a, a theory is that every, everything was put into us, like all of these different um, species. The, their DNA is put into us because that's what we are supposed to do as a human being, that our role is really to bridge all of the, the yins and the yangs, the positive and the negative, the good and the bad, the, in, uh, the inward facing and the outward facing, all of the things that are that seem to be incompatible, that has these, some of these species at war with each other. And they, it's put into us so that we can get, find a solution to live with and come to peace with all of the different um, facets that is within us. So that's a theory. And um, I'm gonna run with that theory. So how, why would I think that that is the theory? Why would I think that that is the reason why? I, it's from my understanding of who the Pleiadians are, because um, I remember the Pleiadians is really the first, the first um, star people that contacted me. And, and I really still vividly remember the first time I become conscious that they are trying to talk to me. I remember it because I was driving at that time. I was driving on the highway and all of a sudden, I have this download and this and these beings called themselves that they are from the seven sisters. And my attention was kind of trying to be on the road because, you know, I am driving on the highway and I actually missed my, my exit. And, and so I knew that, okay, I have to get off the highway because I can't, I can't, Take, I can't do this download and be on the highway because uh, I'm not sure I would make it in one piece if I try to do that. And, and because of that situation, so it, it's, it's really burned in my memory that the first group of star beings that contacted me, I mean, contacted me meaning that they telepathically talked to me. I did not see, I did not see any, um, Pleiadians at all, but they contacted me through telepathic communications. And so I remember that. That was the first time that I become consciously aware. Now, of course, before that, there have been, I've had, I would say, experiences with um, mystical experiences, I, I would say. And um, so I remember I've talked about some of these is the first time I got um, is, is that uh, I, I got something called a reconnection procedure being done, meaning that I'm the, the, the intention of that procedure is to reconnect my energy field with the energy field of planet Earth. And so 
I think at some point, um, maybe maybe about two, three months after that procedure, there was one night that all of a sudden I, I was, my body was spontaneously convulsing. And it, it kind of lasted for um, 24 hours. Like the first couple of hours is the most intense. And then after that, I, it become a lot more um, gentle. So when I tune into it, I still feel that my body wants to move um, involuntarily. It just needed to move. And I, I just feel like I need to spin my spine in a certain direction. So that was, so I have these, I would say mystical experience, but I didn't get, I didn't get any um, telepathic download. I just know that there is, I can feel that there is a, there are some beings there that I cannot see. I can feel their energy. I just, I don't hear any words. I just can feel their energy. So that was, so the Pleiadians were the first beings that I come into contact with. And um, I just want to sum up my experience with the Pleiadians because after that initial um, contact, I would say that they, they contacted me a couple other times throughout that year because that was when was that 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 must have been about um 15 years ago and then um i think around the year 2013 around that around 2012 2013 that was when the pleiadian started to come and talk to me telepathically more consistently so consistently as in i think the initially it was pretty much every week once or twice i would feel the energy they would come and telepathically interact with me um, nowadays they don't come as often nowadays they come maybe let's say once a month however now if I want to talk to them, I know how to, like, I can get, I can get to them. Like when I try to connect with them, I can get a message to them. I can, and I can also feel them talking to me. It's just that for them to actually initiate that um, connection with me, they, they do it maybe once, about once a, a month. Sometimes it's a little, takes, it's a longer period of time, but it's on average once a month. But that's because I already have developed the ability to be able to talk to them and communicate with them. So that's my experience with Pleiadians. And when the way I feel their energy is that they are the most loving energy in that I have come across. Most loving energy. And I'm not saying that the other um, beings that talk to me are not loving at all, but I can feel that their energy is a very feminine energy and it's it just, they just put me at ease. I think that is probably the best um, way of, of putting it, is that it's a very loving, tender, and um, I would say feminine energy as well. And it's, it's really an a spiritual high every time they come. And when I tune into their energy as well, it's like, 
it just puts a smile not just on my face is is that my whole body can smile just when i tune into their energy so i would think of their energy as being a bit more it's really spiritual i think it's it's the only word um spiritual and ethereal is uh, our words that i would use from my own experience with my communication with them and from other sources from other people describing them and from from um, other people channeling them what i gathered them the um the essence of the pleiadian is that their their agenda let's say their agenda is really to inspire us to grow spiritually because their own um their species is more spiritually developed compared to us and compared to um some of the other um well, I can't really say that because Arcturians are really spiritual as well. But in terms of being ethereal, I think I think it's it's the 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 words that I can use for Pleiadians is that it is they are not and not very physical. And um, even for their their ships because they do travel and they travel, but they don't use a, they don't use mechanical device to, to travel. They travel using their own Merkaba. So there would be, well, not, not just one person, not just one Pleiadian traveling in, but as a group, they would come together um, and tune in to activate their own Merkaba, which is their own energy field. And it's really a very um, spiritual and activated and powerful energy field. They travel using their own energy. So that's how they travel through to different um, star system. They use their own, own energy. And that's why they are the, the spiritual, um, hmm, they are the spiritual mother, as, as far as I can feel, is that they are this, our spiritual mother. So, that's how I, I would um, describe the Pleiadians. The other, I would say, species that I have more contact with is really the Arcturians. The Arcturians, how should I describe them? The, it, the, their energy is also sublime as well. Absolutely sublime as well. Um, hmm. But they are more grounding. They're more grounded. The, the, um, the things that the Pleiadians download for me, they, they talk to me about how I, I was created, how my soul was created. Whereas the Arcturians, when they are talking to me, they are more talking to me about um, how to be in my body, how to how to um, tune into and tap into the power that is within my own being. So. It's, it's a different perspective. It's not really as ethereal as the Pleiadians. The Arcturians are more based. I would say it's about the Arcturians for me, it's about embodiment. 
is about. So if the the Pleiadians is about inspiring us to grow or inspiring me to grow spiritually and telling me um, all of those and reminding me who I already am um, in another dimension. The, whereas the Acturians is about helping me to ground who I am in this dimension. So that's how I feel with the Arcturians. And in terms of energy, is that um, the Arcturians is really more about the more practical things. I think when I was doing the research for this, um, I think Matthias Di Stefano, what he said is that the, the Pleiadians is about inspiring us to be spiritual, whereas the Arcturians is about um, letting us know that heaven is already on earth. Heaven is wherever it is that we are and that we have all the, the abilities within us to make and to bring heaven on earth. So if you can think of the Pleiadians as bringing um, or inspiring us to go up to the heaven, the Arcturians is really inspiring us to bring heaven on earth, for us to embody the creator beings that we are and to get to the point where we truly can feel that heaven is already on earth by connecting back to the power that is within ourselves. So these, these two um, species are really the ones that I have the most interactions with. And I think the, the I, I did have some experience with the, the Syrians as well in terms of um, from the Galactic Federation, which they would contact me every now and then. Mm, I would say maybe once every six months. So the Syrians is, but most of the time, the, the Pleiadians and the Arcturians, they are actually still part of the, the, the Federation. It's just that um, when the Syrians come, they it's they come and represent themselves as the Federation because the Federation of Planets is is really located in in um, Syrian in in Sirius, the planet Sirius. So that's why. Um, I do have some interaction with Syrians, but I don't really know them as much. And all I know is really from the others, from other people talking about the Syrians. So I actually want to move on to uh, the, the reptilians. I'm not saying that I have a lot of interaction with them, but I think I've mentioned that I did have an Anunnaki contacting me, um, whether that Anunnaki is from the, the, the good Anunnaki or the bad Anunnaki, I don't know. I just know that. I, I just know what I felt from that interaction. It's... And it's ongoing. Um, it's a lot less, or I should say it's 
it has changed in it actually has evolved and changed over time and it started i think last since last year last year maybe around march time frame i this this anunnaki um started contacting me and at first i was um I was really baffled. How come? Because I really didn't understand who the Anunnaki's are, and and I still don't. Because um, I've read as much as I could about Anunnaki's, also about reptilians as well. However, what everything that I've read out there led to me into the same conclusion is that I know nothing. I know nothing about them because whatever it is that I've read is really does not resonate as true to me. So I actually got to the point where, okay, I cannot trust anything that I've read. So I have to trust what it is that I feel. So and that's why the the that's why we we kind of still connected, energetically connected. And um, I every now and then I would still feel this reptilians um, or this this Anunnaki's presence. And I've actually really tried talking to my guides, talking to my higher self. Why? Why me? Um, so, but the, 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 what came back to me, the answer that came back to me is that don't think of anyone or any species as being good or bad. Because if you think of, things as being good and bad, then you're really setting yourself up um, for a certain experience. And, but if I can get outside of good or bad, then I actually would become, would be able to transcend good and bad and actually have an experience and when you experience something you transform it and what needed what um, my the reason why I had this encounter or this is because I need to transform that belief in myself about good bad um, right wrong positive negative and also this playmate um, from the Anunnaki uh, species from, from that tribe also needed that transformation. And that's why we connected. So where is this going to lead to? I don't know, but I have come to, I would say an understanding of why I needed this experience. And also I let go of judging whether it's good or bad is that I know that this is ongoing and it's going to evolve. And um, in the future, how, I don't know. And I'm, but the one thing I've come to really go is that I surrender to that, to this experience is, is also part of understanding this, this human experiment. I think one of the, the best way that I could really suggest for anyone that's listening to this is that In terms of a purpose, if, if you're trying to ask yourself, what's my purpose here? Um, some people's purpose is to, let's say, to support their family. Some people's purpose is to 
um, become the best singer or the best um, violin player or the best um, actor or the, the best whatever. So in terms of purpose, yes, some people have that purpose, but underneath all of the purpose, humanity's purpose, everyone, everyone that's on earth right now, our, our purpose as, as a human being is to actually transcend good and bad, transcend positive and negative, trans, transcend all of the struggles between all of these different species and come together as one. So that is truly the, the human purpose, is to get to oneness. How are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? I don't know. This is, this is what makes it interesting, is that I really come to understand my purpose and, as a human being, and also it makes it much easier for me to let go of the labels of positive or negative, good or bad, right or wrong also. It's not about any of that as, at all. It's about understanding. It's about experiencing. It's about letting go of all the labels. It's about letting go of all the stories. It's also about letting go of thinking about stories because we, or, or at the very least, I'm very good at um, creating a storm in a teacup. Um, I, I, I think I've improved a little bit now, um, but however, on, 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 on the right days, like when I'm in the right frame of mind, I'm very capable of making up a story about something and get myself completely worked up and crazy and frazzled for nothing at all. And that is what we are as a human being. That's what we're here to do is to let go of our programs that has us do that, that has us mix stories up in our mind and to make it so real in our mind that it actually um, scared ourselves into um, being crazy and acting crazy. So that is really the purpose of every human being is to transcend all of those programmings that has us fighting, not just fighting others. The reason why we fight others is because we have all of these DNA within ourselves. And we are actually fighting within ourselves. And when we know that, when we see fighting, when we see war outside, when we see countries bombing each other outside, it's actually a reflection of what we have within us, within our collective human um, energy, is that because we are fighting ourselves. We are fighting within ourselves. That's why fighting is also outside. And if you, and if you really want to not see fighting outside, then the best thing you can do is actually to go within and get to be in such peace within yourself that you can bridge all of the those differences you can let go of the the part of you that is so good at making up stories to have have someone else be wrong or someone else be right or someone else be positive or negative 
when we can let go and transform those programs so that we don't give them our energy anymore, then we will be able to see the peace outside of us. And that is what I'm here, or that is what humanity, what I believe humanity is here to do. And that's why we have all of these different DNA contributors within one species, within a human being, because that is who we are becoming, who we are becoming. We're not there yet, but that's who we are becoming, is to getting to the point where when we can find and smooth all of the, the fighting, the riches, the misunderstanding within ourselves, when we do that, then we can become the really the that super species within this quadrant of the galaxy that is going to go out and create other species, other to to seed other planets as well, not with the um not with all of those different elements within ourselves fighting, but when we have transcended all of that, when we have found that, then we can go out and know that whatever it is that we see it from then on, that we gave them the, the best intention. And it's really up to that the other species to grow from that. So that's really all I want to say for this week. <laughs>